Good morning, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 27th, 2020, recorded around 9, 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, first and foremost, we are talking about Hurricane Laura this morning. Still a powerful hurricane with sustained winds nearing 100 miles per hour, a strong Category 2 hurricane after slamming into portions of Louisiana last night, including Cameron, Louisiana, and Lake Charles, where a 132-mile-per-hour wind gust was reported. And you can see here on the visible satellite imagery, we still have some pretty good upper-level outflow uh, blowing across the uh, Midwestern states right now. And if we oh, switch over here to the radar, again, you can really see that we have a tremendous amount of freshwater rainfall flooding that's occurring. A lot of flash flood warnings all the way up to the Louisiana-Arkansas border. Uh, Shreveport is reporting uh, multiple trees down here. You can see gusts up to about 39 miles per hour. And the core right now is basically coming right over Clarence and uh, basically going to be heading off towards the north and east. Uh, there's Jonesboro right there, Jonesboro, Mississippi. And this will kind of move then into near Little Rock. And for areas off towards the east of this, there's a tornado watch uh, highlighted in the yellow colors over here. There's a tornado watch that includes Little Rock, Arkansas, all the way down to basically New Orleans and surrounding vicinity for the uh, potential for tornadoes. We talked about some of these rain bands that were still down south of the storm, excuse me, down south of the storm yesterday. Well, now they all have to evict off towards the north. Excuse me. And what that's going to do is that's basically going to pump all of this moisture in from the Gulf still and allow thunderstorms to develop on the south side and on, on the east side. And that's going to produce uh, some isolated tornadoes on those east side bands. So that's why there's a tornado watch in effect for those areas. Uh, eventually, this is going to continue up off through the Midwest. And we can see here, uh, this is expected to remain a tropical storm through at least uh, early tonight into early, very early tomorrow morning, d weakening into a depression. And then by Sunday, it's sitting over central Kentucky, uh, basically, and then moving out onto as a, a post-tropical remnant circulation into Virginia, coming off basically of the Delve Marva in Cape May, New Jersey re-strengthening into a tropical storm except this will likely be an extra tropical transition instead of it having fully tropical characteristics there is a chance that it could come off and regain fully tropical characteristics or subtropical uh, but this seems to be a post-tropical circulation that is going to strengthen from an extra tropical process and that transition will strengthen it once it gets back over water and then this will continue up towards maritime canada and potentially uh impact portions of the united kingdom down the road here over the last uh, over the next uh, couple of days so this is something that i, I kind of wanted to point out because a lot of people were kind of saying about the storm surge uh cameron louisiana is right here basically where the storm made landfall uh we don't have a lot of very well uh, we, we don't have really any instruments off towards the east of uh, east side of the storm uh, where the highest surge amounts were those highest surge amounts were probably confined to a very small portion right near a uh, grand lake and, and catfish lake upper mud lake basically willow lake those areas probably saw the worst of that storm surge in upwards of 15 to 20 feet and that storm surge did penetrate inland a good bit uh, so we did kind of see that verify and uh, we can see here this comes from Nicholas Isabella over on Twitter uh, NYC storm chaser again uh, he is in one of our, our group chats here uh, so we have access to these uh, photos but he uh, took these and again this is coming from Lake Charles Louisiana you can see some of the damage there again go follow NYC storm chaser Nicholas Isabella over on Twitter uh, because this is his uh, work uh, but you can see that the, just the incredible amount of damage uh, and destruction that they did have down there in Lake Charles Louisiana again uh, go follow Nicholas Isabella for more uh, information and uh, more photographs here but you can see two of the uh, damage photos here from Lake Charles, Louisiana, just absolutely incredible. Uh, that, that's a, a sign, a street sign that's literally in a store. Um, you can just see basically clutters of debris everywhere uh, throughout, you know, downtown Lake Charles. Uh, a lot of sky rises had their windows completely blown out. 
Uh, and we had an upwards of 134 mile per hour wind gust in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Cameron recorded 127, and that was likely uh, before the sensors there actually failed. Um, because the sensors only hold up to a certain amount of wind speed and actually some of these sensors are under sampling the winds uh, because they're not made to they're not designed for this high level wind so it is entirely possible that uh, Cameron was probably over 140 to 150 in terms of those uh, wind gusts Lake Charles though right now seems to be taking the top at 134 uh, just inland there and then of course you know over Alexandria uh, 85 miles per hour uh, well to the east of the storm center so again that just go, goes to kind of emphasize that we had a very significant event and we are not done yet we are far from done so while Laura heads inland we have another area of disturbance to watch luckily only with a 20% chance over the next five days and this will be uh, this is something again for the lesser Antilles to have to monitor again um, you know anywhere from you know San uh, basically you know St. Croix Puerto Rico Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, the same goes for you that now you need to be watching this new system and again this will likely pose a threat for the northern islands over the next uh, couple of days and conditions are expected to become gradually more favorable as this begins to move further off towards the west into the central and western tropical Atlantic. This will likely uh, try to go on to develop at some point in time. And we can kind of see here at the CDAS, uh, sea surface temperatures from tropicaltippets.com. Uh, the area where a storm is at near the Cabo Verde Islands, which is basically right in through here, that's the Cabo Verde Islands. Uh, this is going to have a pretty good chance of, of uh, developing once it gets further off towards the west, over towards the Lesser Antilles. So again, this is going to be something we're going to have to monitor right now. Low chances for development, so nothing significantly high at the current moment. Um, but we can see that upper ocean heat content values that are still there. You can see where this big area, this big chunk here got taken out of the upper ocean heat content from Laura and Marco. Uh, so luckily right now, the central gulf is pretty, uh, you know, it is kind of pretty disturbed right now. But you notice the western part of the Gulf of Mexico is still very warm. Those sea surface or those upper ocean heat content values combined with those sea surface temperatures are still very warm. The Caribbean is still very warm. The southwestern Atlantic is very warm. Uh, basically everywhere in here is just warm. It's ready for development. And uh, we can see here on the European uh, model here, this is the zero Z run from uh, last night at about eight o'clock. And we can see what we're looking at here. This is the 850 millibar vorticity. Basically the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And this basically shows you your you know spin in the atmosphere. And again, we can just see these tropical waves that kind of come off. One tries to go on to develop, another tries to go on to develop. We're likely going to have multiple tropical cyclones try to go on to develop. Uh, basically come by you know early to mid September and this kind of basically coincides with the peak of the season now you know of course on this particular model run this is you know more than five you know more than five days out at this time frame but the bottom line is that there is going to be something that we are going to have to watch as time progresses and the hurricane center highlights that with the tropical disturbance that has a chance to go on to develop uh, after it moves into the central and western Atlantic basins so again there's a lot to watch but right now at least we're going to have a tad bit of a break we don't have any hurricanes barreling through right now uh, besides Laura uh, but again after this we're going to have you know a little bit of a, of a break not much uh, obviously because we're still tracking this tropical wave uh, but at least we don't have any additional hurricanes uh, that are kind of coming in at this current moment in time so that is certainly some good news now, of course, uh, in the Eastern Pacific Basin, real quick, we have a tropical storm, Hernan, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, this is a really not going to be much of a significant threat to strengthen a lot of the waters right off the Baja, where this is going to be going, uh, this was significantly upwelled uh, from Hurricane Genevieve uh, not too long ago, so that's uh, certainly some good news, but regardless, this could bring near tropical storm conditions for portions of the Mexican coastline. Uh, of course on the eastern Pacific side and that could also bring some heavier rainfall um, but really again most of the impacts especially for the Baja are going to be very limited gusty winds heavy rainfall but nothing significant 
This weakens into a post-tropical remnant circulation by uh, noon on Saturday, uh, but really weakens into a tropical depression by uh, midnight here on, on Saturday and becomes a remnant circulation there shortly after. And this is the other tropical storm here uh, that again is really no threat to land. Again, it will remain a tropical storm at least through Saturday and then weaken to a tropical depression before finally kind of getting caught up with our other storm and then getting uh, raced on out there into the open Pacific, or Eastern Pacific. And again, this will also pose no threat to land either. So really, either two of these systems really don't have a chance to actually go on to develop much at all. So again, that is basically what's going to be happening here over the next couple of days. Again, I wanted to get a shorter video update in today, um, just kind of working around, you know, work schedule and whatnot. But again, that should just kind of hopefully give you a brief rundown of what's going on. Again, right now we're, we're kind of in this little bit of a, a lull period, but we still have another tropical wave coming off of Africa that we've got to watch. Of course, Laura is going to be posing some significant impacts over the next few days, even as it moves uh, off the coast there of Cape May, New Jersey, in that vicinity, still going to be bringing some heavy rain, gusty winds, etc. Um, as this basically moves on through. Again, a slight risk for severe weather all the way up to near Little Rock today from uh, for tornadoes, the potential for damaging winds and tornadoes as uh, Hurricane Laura continues to move northward and eventually moves off towards the north and east. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Uh, no live stream tonight, uh, but I do hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.